So thanks to my good friend, uh, Nick Bailey from baileys.com. You ever go to baileys.com, mama? Uh, no. It's my favorite website. It's the, uh, the ultimate log website for logging equipment, tree service stuff. Nick is a great guy. Nick's the one that helped me get uh, contact with Lucas for the Lucas Mill. So I contacted him. I said, Nick, I said, can I borrow a chipper from you? Because <laughs> I knew they sold these big Mobar chip chippers or they rent them as well. So he brought one out for us. But I wanted to show you this thing uh, is incredible. Uh, the funny thing about it, when it first pulled up, I was telling I was telling you how big it was. And what, what did you say? I thought it was going to be bigger. I thought it was going to be bigger. <laughs> and you didn't say that when we ran a tree through it, did you? It is so powerful. Uh, we have never ran big chippers like this before and of course you know safety is a huge concern I mean every year um, tree workers that always you hear about it get pulled into the, these things and the thought of that I mean it's just terrifying but if you look inside here you can see this will handle up to how big was it it's huge big I don't, trees. Even, remem I don't even remember so some of the safety features on this that are really make me feel good are there's a if you look at these aluminum pads right here those are sensors, and those sensors are tied into a wristband that we're all wearing right here that has a chip in it. If this wristband comes into contact with that field right there, you it will shut everything down. So let's say if the tree was getting in and you accidentally got caught into that, as soon as as soon as that device touches that, it'll shut the whole thing down. It's kind of like the saw stop technology on the skill saws. Well, that's those yellow cords, right? Or the, Yeah, or you can pull the yellow cord as well. Uh, the other people might say, well, what happens if you get your foot caught in there? You know, you're stuck, you know, sticking your foot to press in there, which you shouldn't do. Uh, well, I got you covered on that. I got a sensor on my boot too, right there. So I, I don't plan on going in that chipper at all. It's got a winch on it that's, uh, that you'll see us using here. We're gonna use this to skid all those trees. It's about a five, 6,000 pound winch. If you come around here, you can see the chute that we're using. So the chute is adjustable hydraulic and we're just blowing it into this uh, box trailer that we rented at the local rent renting place um, and then taking it up uh, and dumping them in Mrs. W's garden. This is the best part over here. The engine on this, you know how many horsepower it is? A lot. I forget, it's between 140 and 150 horsepower Cummins diesel engine, turbocharged. Amazing, listen to this. <laughs> Look at the radiator. That is a radiator, huh? That's like a Mack truck there. I know, I know you're not you're supposed to let them run, but I, I, I need can't have all that noise. We have that hooked up to the tractor, and so we're using that, moving that around, and it's just working out really good. Someone is not happy because she has to stay in the truck. She is not, we don't quite trust her, and she's pretty camouflaged, so she gets a little sad. Lucy gets out of the way, but. Oh, you poor thing. Uh, are you gloating? Yeah, you're gloating. <laughs> I think this will keep us busy for a few loads. <laughs> so these are hangers here, and I kind of did this intentionally. We're pulling from the butt ends out and having them hanging up here is fine. It's nice if they're on the ground, but we're gonna grab them here and the winch should be strong enough we can pull them and they'll fall down safely. So they're at a steep enough angle there that I'm not worried about the choker setter being in danger. Just uh, keep a heads up on it, but. Unless you have a 90 mile an hour wind gust, it's not it's gonna stay right there. Just don't stay on the get on the downside of it. So yeah, I think that'll keep us busy for a while. Let's head over to the uh we'll show you the chipper and then we'll uh start skidding. And you won't believe the power of this chipper. It is ferocious. Ferocious.
have a grove of trees that were thinning to keep up the health of the trees are too close together and the tractor got stuck. So right now we're gonna use the wench off of the pickup truck and get it out. Attempt to. No, we are gonna get it out. I am a firm believer in getting it out. So Cody's putting a chain around a tree and then he's going to use, what else are you gonna use? I'm gonna use a strap that's gonna be about 12 inches too short. What do you want to bet? Wow. Perfection. No. Not quite. I don't know if I can get it hooked back. Do you want me to back up 12 inches? Two inches too short. Do you want me to back it up? Uh, please. Okay. Get it connected? Yeah. I got this wrong. Should have the strap on the tree, but that tree's coming down anyway. All right. So this winch can pull 9,000 pounds straight, which is not very much when trying to get a tractor unstuck. But by using this, block we can double our pulling power hopefully so it's it's pretty stuck in isn't it papa i've seen worse but I've seen better too. All right, so we'll hook the we'll hook the block to the pin, and by by doing this, we should be able to pull quite a bit of weight. So, do you want to run the winch or the tractor? Tractor safer, right? <laughs> what takes less skill? When you're on the tractor, you just gotta give it the beans. I can give it the beans. Do you wanna start the truck up, baby? Sure. So we'll start the truck up because you want all the power available to the battery when you're winching something this heavy. So a wire rope on a winch, if it were to break, is very dangerous. There's a lot of um, there's a lot of energy in it. It'll actually you can snap back, and if you're in its way, it'll just it'll cut you in half. One trick you can do with this is you can throw a, a coat or a stick or anything you have, just a little bit of something putting downward pressure on it. So if it does break, it will force the cable down. The new cable, the new soft braid stuff that we're using on the chipper is, is much superior. It's, it's just as strong, if not stronger, but if it does break, there's no energy in it, and it, it just falls to the ground. So what we're gonna do is, um, I'm gonna have you get in the tractor. Okay. I'm gonna put it into gear. Okay. Or you put it in reverse. Okay. Come on, let me show you how to lock the differential. Okay, so what you're, what's really important for you to do is you're gonna have to be watching your front tires. Okay. If they start spinning, let the power off. You only want to put enough power on there just to assist me in getting you out. If you're spinning, you're going to dig deeper, and if the tractor sits down on its belly pans, we're not going to get it out of here anytime soon. Okay. The other thing is right there on your heel is a differential lock. Excuse me, right here. This is a differential lock. You need to step on that with your heel. Oh, okay. Right now. Step on it, hold that down. What that does is that's like a locker, like the Jeeps we used to have in Moab. Oh. It locks the rear differential. So when you let go of it, once you get up and out, don't be afraid, you'll hear it snap really loud and that's when it's going out. So if you hear that, nothing's broken. And so when do I step on this? The whole time. Okay. Yeah. But not yet. Start it up. Oh, it's down. You have to hold it down with your foot. Okay. It won't hold down by itself okay. unless you're under power. So put it in reverse, start it up, be watching that tire and only give it enough power uh, not to, to help me, but, but not to slip. Okay. Make sure your front bucket's raised so you're not dragging that. Okay. Got it? Should I start it? Yep.
a hole. All right, ready? Watch the tire, don't let it in too fast. Yeah. Okay, I'll take it out from here. Okay. You're, you're good. good. Good job. Yeah, so to find balance, you were you started out really good and then you put lots of gas in your you're digging and you're digging a hole and I'm trying to pull you out. So you gotta watch your tires if they start spinning less power. Literally so, digging your own grave. Yes, just just enough power to let them slip and keep helping me out but not not digging yourself a hole. Because these are really knobby. They'll just in seconds they'll dig themselves a hole and once this once you're sitting on the belly pan your host. There's nothing you can do. So, but you did good. Thanks. Scary? No. But I did want to keep the back window closed in case the lunch broke. <laughs> no, that probably helped. You realize that there are some attachments if you if you want to dig holes, right? You, you don't have to use the tires. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks, Paul. Well, That's it really got, helpful. I was watching it, and then all of a sudden the bottom just dropped out and it got soft, and I guess we're not getting to those logs in there. And, um, it, it's, it's impressive. What? I'm impressed with our tractor that it has caused so much damage. Yeah. That's not the first time I've been stuck down here, is it? I think you like it. You like an adventure. You make your own. You All right. You, so. this is, isn't this like the fourth time? Third or fourth time? It's the second time, actually. Ah, let's round it up. All right. So we'll go. This isn't working. We'll go back to our old method. I know you're all very excited to see the chipper in action, but we had to get the tractor unstuck first. You know, I, when I was editing this morning, I thought about this footage and uh, whether or not that I wanted to share it and put it in because, you know, and it was a struggle for me because, uh, you know what, it, it, I was very impatient. It was the end of a long day. I had uh, all these great expectations, all these things that I was hoping to get accomplished and well, we didn't really accomplish a lot of them, and then on top of all of that, uh, I got the tractor stuck, which further uh, contributed to my aggravation. And uh, the reason why I, I shared this is because this there was a lesson in this and in in patience. And it took every fiber of my being um, to be civil to my to my family, uh, getting through the struggle and the situation. And. And God really spoke to me and, and, and helped me on this. And, and the word came to mind, you know, from the Psalms, he writes, uh, or the psalmist writes, to be still and know that I am God. Because at that particular moment, my life was full of turmoil and stress and aggravation. And it was really easy for me, um, I guess my default position was to, to lash out and, and to, to blame um, everyone around me for the predicament that I had gotten myself in. And that be still came to me. And, you know, when I, and also I want to say when, when God, I sometimes I'll say, you know, God speaks to me and gives me these messages. I'm not saying that he, uh, that I'm hearing a literal booming voice from the sky. The way that God's, although I have no doubt that that, that is possible uh, and that that has happened to people in history and probably still happens today. I just don't know about it. When I say he speaks to me, he speaks to me through his word. That's why it's so important to be spend time in God's Word is because that's how He communicates with us, by bringing these things to mind that we can apply in our day-to-day -day struggles. And I, I, I think back to that, you know, that be still and know, like, does it really matter that whether we get four loads of chips or one load of chips or two loads of chips, if at the expense of hurting our family, coming off as an angry tyrant, ruining the entire day, the experience for everyone because of our fury and, and lack of patience and anger, what did we gain? So we got another load of chips done. So we pushed everyone to the brink of exhaustion to get what we thought we needed to get done. Was it worth it? If you could have my perspective, I think, of the video camera 
and looking at your own behavior at the end of these things, at the end of the day's work, uh, it, it um, sometimes you know, I, I, I felt a little ashamed, I really felt a little ashamed after this. And, and as impatient and short, short, short as I was with my family, and I, um, um, I'm not going to repeat that today. God can give us victory over these things, over our impatience that many of us as men suffer with. And I think of a perfect example. It was the story of uh, was it Paul and Silas that were thrown in prison for preaching. And, you know, the, the, usually, you know, the old guys, the old cops used to say, you could tell a, uh, if a man was guilty, if you weren't sure if he committed a crime, by how he behaved if you put him in, j- in prison for a night. The guilty man would rest. He knew that he had done it. He didn't have to worry about it. He didn't have to lie or run from it anymore. He was caught, and he was might as well get a good night's sleep. Where the innocent man will spend the entire night pacing the floor. He won't get any sleep for fear that he may be falsely accused of something. And again, that's not always the case, but I think it uh, is a pretty good rule of thumb. But when we go to that story of Paul and Silas that were thrown in prison for their uh, for preaching the gospel. The story tells us that they they sang, rejoiced, and they prayed all night, and that the other inmates that were in there with him just marveled at how can these men being so confined, they, and not, they weren't only just thrown into a prison, but they were shackled. And many times in those days, you know, they were would, would shackle them or put them up or even pinion people in a way that was very uncomfortable, and I have no doubt that probably something like that had taken place. But the peace and the stillness that God can give you in, in any circumstance, that is a testimony to it. And when we find ourselves lacking that patience and we find ourselves lashing out at our loved ones or coworkers, what that should tell us is that we're pretty far from God at that moment. And it might be a good time to take 15 minutes, take a short walk, hit your knees if you have to, but ask for that help. Ask for that peace and ask for God to give you the strength to be still in the face of adversity and difficulty.